morning everyone. In this video we're going to cover Muslim beliefs about life after death or what they sometimes refer to as Akira. Because Islam is a monotheistic religion, meaning it only believes in one God, it has a fairly clear explanation as to what happens when we die. Like Christians, Muslims believe that an individual will either be rewarded in the afterlife or be punished in hell. Life is a God-given and sacred gift, but it's also a test from Allah. As such, this earthly life should be seen as preparation for the life to come. Only Allah decides when someone lives and when someone dies. As it says in the Quran, a soul cannot die unless Allah gives his permission. Akira is the Muslim term for the belief in life after death, or the final judgment from Allah. For Muslims, life is a gift, but also a test from Allah. And as such, this earthly life is essentially a preparation for the life to come and should be seen as a test of everything that they do. Muslims believe that they have free will and Allah is aware of what they do. Consequently, a key is the point where they'll be held accountable for everything that they've done in this life. Remember that the term Islam actually means submission. So they'll also be held accountable for living a good life in submission to Allah, observing and practicing the teachings of the Quran and the pillars of Islam. Muslims believe at the end of the world there'll be a day of judgment and only Allah knows when that day is. However, individuals who die before that day, the process of life after death is as follows. Before someone dies, a version of the Shahada is said by either the dying person or said on their behalf. They may also recite the final words of Prophet Muhammad. The soul or ruh is then released from the body. That goes to the angel of death and waits for the day of judgment when every individual will rise again, both body and soul. This waiting period is known as Barzakh. This period will end when the archangel Israfil blows the trumpet to announce the resurrection of the dead. Muslims believe that on the day of judgment the dead will be raised from their graves and be judged by Allah. A book which represents everything that individual has done is presented to them. As the Quran said, everything they did is in written records. The good will receive the book in their right hand and this will indicate that they're going to paradise. The bad will get the book in their left hand and that shows that they're going to hell, a place of intense suffering and pain that never ends. So what then is heaven or paradise like? Well, Muslims refer to paradise or heaven as Jannah. To gain entry to heaven, beings must pass over a narrow bridge. Those who have been blessed by Allah will pass safely. These might be beings who have fought or been persecuted for believing in Allah or those who have lived a virtuous life. Muslims believe that there are many stages or levels to heaven. In some Islamic traditions, it's believed that there are seven layers. Others, there could be as many as a hundred. These levels represent one's closeness to Allah after death. As it says in the Hadith, the dwellers who dwell in the level appropriate to their deeds. Jannah is portrayed as a garden where people will be young again. The Quran makes it clear that there's no death, pain, grief or evil in that place. The purpose of heaven then is to reward those who have lived a life in submission to Allah and committed to following him despite the tests and hardships. As it says in the Quran, be sure we shall test you, but give glad tidings to those who patiently preserve. Those who, when misfortune strikes them, say, indeed we belong to Allah and to him is our return. These are the ones upon whom are blessed. In comparison, Muslims refer to hell as Jahannam. Hell is described as fire which burns forever and it's a place of intense suffering that never ends. The purpose of hell is to provide sufficient punishment for those who've gone against the will of Allah. Muslims believe that Allah is the most just and the master on the day of judgment. However, Muslims believe that Allah is also merciful, and this has given human beings chances to repent and live a good life. One important concept associated with life after death is the concept of al-Qadr or predestination. Islam teaches that Allah is omniscient or all-knowing and has eternal knowledge of everything that has happened and will happen. Muslims believe that Allah has a divine plan for us all. This is what they refer to as al-Qadr. Allah has a master plan of everything that will happen in the world and it has been pre-planned by him. However, Allah is also transcendent or beyond human understanding. As such, Muslims must just accept what happens in their life as part of a much bigger plan that we can't possibly question or control. It says in the Quran, he knows what's in the heavens and earth and knows what you conceal and what you declare. Allah is knowing of what is within. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that Muslims don't have free will. Muslims often recite the phrase, Inshallah, meaning if God is willing. It's often recited to remind Muslims that whilst they decide their own actions, they'll only happen if Allah allows it. Muslims are essentially accepting that their life is lived in submission to Allah and what he wants. Muslims can still make decisions on their own lives, but they must recognise that Allah will only allow these things to happen if it follows his will and plans. This is expressed in the Quran where it says, And never say of anything, indeed I will do that tomorrow, except when Allah, if God wills. 
Therefore, humans do still have free will, but their decisions are essentially part of the test from Allah. Allah will hold us accountable for all our decisions and already knows the decisions that we'll make. That's part of Al-Qaeda. So is the belief in life after death important in Islam and should they focus on it? Well, many Muslims might agree that they need to focus on life after death in order to prepare for it. Muslims believe that everything in life is a test from Allah and consequently Muslims need to ensure that in everything they do, they focus on and prepare for Allah's judgment. In the Quran it says, Be sure we shall test you, but give glad tidings to those who patiently preserve. Therefore, if they fail to focus on life after death in this life, arguably they're likely to lose sight of the end goal and commit acts which go against Allah. Similarly, many Muslims might agree that they need to prioritise beliefs about life after death because on that day they'll be held accountable for all of their actions. In the afterlife, they'll be presented with a book of all their actions. As it says in the Quran, everything they do is in written records. Many Muslims might interpret this to mean that the belief in life after death is important because it provides the the motivation for acting morally. Finally then, many Muslims, particularly those who've experienced hardship or persecution, might argue that they should focus on life after death because it gives their life purpose and motivates them to submit to Allah. In the Quran it says heaven or paradise is described as a garden where there's no sadness or grief. For Muslims this is the ultimate reward for life lived in submission. Furthermore, Muslims believe that there are several layers and consequently the more someone would submit, the better their reward. As the Hadith said, the dwellers who dwell in the level appropriate to their deeds. However, on the other hand, some Muslims might argue that the afterlife is beyond our control due to the concept of al-Qadr or predestination. This is the idea that Allah is aware and in control of all things. If Allah controls everything, some might believe that Allah already knows and is aware of our position in the afterlife. Consequently, it might be better to focus on things that are within our control. However, you could evaluate this and say that whilst Muslims believe in al-Qadr, they do also recognise that we have some free will and control over our decisions. In addition, some Muslims might argue that we shouldn't live our lives and act morally simply to earn rewards. Allah is aware of our intentions or naya, and this will be taken into account on the Day of Judgment as much as the actions themselves. As the Quran says, he knows what is in the heavens and earth and knows what you conceal and what you declare. Allah is knowing of what is within. If all our actions have been motivated simply by earning rewards in the afterlife, this is likely to be judged harshly by Allah. Finally then, some Muslims might disagree and say that they shouldn't focus on life after death, but instead they have a moral responsibility to focus on Allah's work and promoting justice in this life. In the Quran they're told, believers stand up firmly for justice. In addition, Prophet Muhammad in the Hadith says, whoever amongst you sees an evil, he must change it with his hand. This implies that social justice and submitting to Allah's wishes is their priority, not life after death. So, same system again. If you want to do the test questions, go on Quizlet or Kahoot. If you want some practice exam questions, look to the following slides. Good luck.